Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Great CEO Podcast. With me today is another great CEO, um, Cleve Adams. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Stephen. And uh, it's my pleasure to be on the show. And thanks so much for inviting me. Awesome. So, yeah, in a few words, if you can just give us a little bit of information about yourself and, and your company, um, Trestle Group. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, I'm a six-time cybersecurity artificial intelligence CEO. Uh, I started a company in the 90s called WebSense. You guys have probably heard of that. Guys, you, you OGs out there. <laughs> uh, WebSense was, we took it from two guys and a dog and a plastic table. We were the first cybersecurity unicorn in the world. And we took uh, WebSense from, like I said, two guys to uh, a billion dollar IPO three years later, went public in March of 2000. Pretty impressive. The company, the company eventually sold to Raytheon for $2 billion. So not a bad startup. Uh, since then, I've been helping other cybersecurity and artificial intelligent entrepreneurs. I started a business called Trestles Group uh, in the early 2000s. And that company has had about 45 uh, clients uh, over the over the last year, few years. We have um, been helping entrepreneurs in cybersecurity raise money, uh, put together management teams, uh, augment what they need with uh, specialists. For instance, if they need help with product development, we have uh, you know, product engineers, if we if you need marketing help, we have marketing guys, sales help, we have sales guys and so on. So we're very busy in that area. Matter of fact, we've got about 11 clients today and uh, everything's going, you know, pretty exciting in the space, as you know. So, yeah, real, real fun, awesome. strong company. Um, why why I say I'm a six time CEO? Well, when Trestles Group started, I used to be approached or am approached by private equity firms and venture capital firms to help right. with their portfolio companies. So that's where I got started. And that's why we started this business. And we have helped many uh, entrepreneurs out there get funding and get management and get revenue. I think the biggest thing is get revenue. Sure. So that's what we're known for. That's what we're known for is revenue generation. Yeah. Um, so that's really it. And uh, I would accept the uh, CEO roles uh, from the private equity firms to help with their portfolio companies. And for the last four or five in a row, we have um, uh, been on kept brought on board to help them um, have a little I'm having a little uh, camera slip there um, to help them, uh, you know, with their portfolio company. So it's a real interesting uh uh, company, real interesting, uh, a lot sure. of fun doing. So it seems, seems like it's a pretty um, unique value proposition and offering that you have. Are there any competitors that do something similar? And if yes, what is your um, differentiator? Well, there's a lot of revenue guys out there, but uh, none of them that focus on cybersecurity and artificial intelligence, uh, none of them with the uh, Rolodex that we have. And none of them with the track record we have. So we're we're all yes, there are competitors, but we uh, we feel we're you know heads above the rest. Sure, no, that that makes a lot of sense. So this isn't um, a a traditional you know type of you know software company in terms of the the revenue that you get in Trestles Group. Um, how much of it uh, is recurring, or is it just um for the duration of a specific project with a company? Well, it it obviously depends. So we do deals for recurring revenue, uh, depending on uh, how long the contract is. We do deals with uh, the commissions on sales uh, that are ongoing. Uh, if they recur for the company, they recur for us. And we also do deals with uh, stock uh, and equity in the company. So yes, it's uh, it's across the board. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. So um, as, as you're growing your company, um, are you experiencing any points of constraint? If there was one constraint that was removed, you'd be able to, to grow your business a lot quicker. Well, the economy sucks, <laughs> right? So, you know, sure. obviously with people with more money want to hire more consultants and, and to help their companies. So, yeah, yeah, that's always an issue. The pandemic didn't, didn't help us any. Right. So people kind of shut it down. And when they shut it down, you know, they uh, that, that kind of stopped in its track. So, you know, if, if those if, if the economy would keep going uh, during uh, the last administration's uh, uh, time, 
And if uh, we don't come up with any crazy viruses in the future, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, right. Right. Who knows what they're making now and behind uh, in, in garages and in laboratories <laughs> across the world? Exactly. We don't we don't know. So same with this one. We didn't know we were, you know, developing a virus in China. Yeah. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. So a lot of CEOs love to hear how other CEOs spend their time. So how many hours a week would you say you work and how do you allocate your time? Ah, uh, funny. Um, counting hours. I don't. I don't, I don't think I've done that. So probably 60. Okay. You know, you think about it. Uh, but, you know, I'm pretty active. I live on the beach in Southern California. So I uh, am in the water all the time. Right now, the water is about 73, 74 degrees. So it's perfect for swimming nice. and surfing and diving, whatever. Um, you know, I'm a swimmer and I'm a golfer and I'm a, you know, a, a runner and jogger and hiker so i'm always outdoors doing something right that's fantastic that's that's yeah. quite the lifestyle i love it so yeah, i mean why not you can and here you can do it 12 months a year okay uh, now, now well, there's no rainy season there's no snow <laughs> season. Now, the now, only season is oh it's 10 degrees cooler than it was you know a couple months ago that's that's the seasons here <laughs> now i'm getting jealous so let's get yeah, back the leaves don't even the leaves don't even turn here <laughs> wow <laughs> so from a, um, I know a lot of CEOs have challenges on delegating specific tasks. So from your perspective as, as a CEO, maybe in this company or in previous roles, what were like some of the biggest things that you had, you, you had a hard time um, getting, um, letting go of, and then, but you ultimately ended up delegating to others? Well, you know, I've been doing this a long time, so I am a master delegator. So I would prefer <laughs> delegating things and keeping them together. Now there are some deals that I won't delegate. So let's say that I'm helping a company close a large fortune 500 deal. And I like to make sure that I'm hands-on on that deal. So yeah, I, I usually um, will stay if I'm really helping the company, if I'm a fractional CEO mm -hmm. or a full-time CEO, which I've been many times, uh, then obviously I, I, uh, I do the CEO in part, but I make sure that the, delegation is of all the tasks of the office of the CEO are, are well handled. So I, I love delegating. I, I make sure the right people are in the right places. And uh, the things that I don't delegate are when things are coming down to the wire and we need to close business. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. So you've been, you've been a CEO multiple times now. Um, in, in addition to delegation, which is fantastic, what would you say are two or three other things that are, you know, central to you as, as, a, as a CEO? Well, I found out a long time ago that revenue is king, right? So if you are a company and you have a bad product and you have a bad market, and if your revenue is going through the roof, you're fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're a company with a great product in a growing market and your revenue's flat, you're in trouble. Sure. So basically what we do is what I do as a CEO and as a consultant is I focus on revenue. And what I found over the last 20 plus years of doing this is that if you focus on revenue, everything else fixes itself. For instance, if you focus on revenue, the product's got to work. Right. And if the product's got bugs, you got to fix it. Mm -hmm. And so that so the product and the engineering part fall into place. If you're growing revenue, then marketing's got to be working. Right. Marketing's mm -hmm. got to be generating leads, got to be qualifying leads, got to be getting, you know, sending good qualified leads over the fence. Uh, so the sales guys can close business. So marketing's got to be working. Well, obviously, if your revenue is growing, sales has got to be working. And obviously, if your finance, you know, if your finance has got to be working because, you know, they've got to. They, so all of a sudden you focus on revenue and all the cylinders of your sports car are firing away. Yep. And so and if one of them doesn't fire, you know, you, I like to use a sports car analysis uh, uh, because it's got eight cylinders. It represents eight departments within your company, you know, nice. sales, marketing, I, finance, engineering, customer support. I, customer, I like that analogy. You, yeah, yeah, why not, right? Sure. And then if, uh, you know, seven cylinders are running great and the eighth cylinder sucks, well, you're, you suck, yep, right? Because you're not going to win any race. 
uh, you're not going to win anything with a bad cylinder or fouled park spark plug or something that doesn't make the car run right. You right. lose. It, it makes a per makes perfect sense. So therefore, you need to fine tune your vehicle uh, every all the time. Uh, you find that race cars they don't fine tune the vehicles only when it screws up. They fine tune their vehicles all the time, time. before yep. the race, during the race, after the race, you name it. They're fine tuning a vehicle. And that's what I do. I am a company fine tuner. <laughs> I make sure all the divisions are running great. All the groups in the organization know where we're going, have goals. You know, it's going to be, uh, I don't know where you're at, Stephen, but I'm in Southern California and north of San Diego. So if I go north and think I'm going to go to San Diego, which is south of me, I'm probably not going to make it. Right. So I really need to know where I'm going and know how I'm going to get there and know, you know, when I'm going to get there, because that gives me a goal. Right. I get it. And so get basically it. your your team has to have those goals and they need to know where they're going and how they're going to get there and uh, and get, have the tools to help them get there. So that's basically what I'm all about. Yep. I'm all oh. about hey delegation. I'm all about making sure that the sports car is fine tuned. I'm constantly fine tuning the cylinders. I'm making sure everything works and make sure that revenue is growing. That that sounds fantastic. I, I see a new li LinkedIn title: Company Fine Tuner. I could do that, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll maybe after this call I'll go in there and put a little fine tuning. I should have a little wrench with a sports car up there. With a <laughs> company fine tuner. Yeah. Well, can, anyway, that's that's kind of the secret because if you get a guy that's focused on products, well, great. You're going to have great products. But if they're not sold, sure. you, you're in trouble. Nope. So, you, or you or need the fact of a lot of companies out there, they don't have products that are great, but they're selling them. Yep. And they're doing great. And I can name a couple of large companies right now, which I, you know, I cuss at their products daily. Uh, and they're some of the biggest companies in the world. Sure. So sure. they're sold and marketed properly. Exactly. Exactly. Well, congratulations on all your success with your previous companies and best of luck to you with Trestle the Group. Well, thanks so much. I really yep. appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate the time. Yep.